my biggest nervousness is wiring this bike and that's where we've gotten to. So I'm circling it for courage, um, hoping that um, it will arrive because it hasn't arrived yet. They say if you circle anti-clockwise six times and then clockwise, no they don't, I'm full of, anyway. So this is the goal today. Um, this is the lunchbox, which is super old. Look, 92,000 kilometers, under 60,000 miles, but who knows? Um, so it's got fuel, um, speed, indicators, brights, a warning lamp, neutral, no idea, I think it's the clock. Uh, choke, oil temperature, oil level, battery, RPM, gear indicator. So um, this thing is pretty nice. Well, it's it's nice if it was new and all shiny and worked, but it's heavy and it's large. So the goal is to get this instead of this. Now, BMW have got funky electronics, so it's not just a case of unplugging and plugging. You've got to go through the tenet box to get that to replace this. And that's where this comes in. So this is the tenet box. Um, and I thought it was quite complicated. Um, it looks actually very easy, which is relieving. However, it is limited. Um, the other option is the motor gadget, uh, blue unit, or M unit, blue, or just M unit. Um, and that box replaces this, all of this, right? So your entire box of relays and, and stuff, you basically chuck away everything except for the fuel um, and ignition wiring. Um, and you save a lot of space. So that would be ideal, but that's like a thousand bucks. 900 bucks last time I looked, New Zealand. So it's quite expensive. Where the Tenet, which kind of achieves what I want to achieve, which is to get a better dashboard, is like 400. Um, so it's less than half the price. Um, I think it was 400, 230 euro. What's that? Actually, it's more like 500. So um, where I think the M unit is like five. Anyway, doesn't matter. I've got to get it to work. So what I discovered, interestingly enough, um, uh, is that the tenet basically just replaces the wiring to here. So you can um, you can't remove the wiring like you can over there. You've got to keep all of that and maybe clip away stuff you don't need. But all it does is allow you to plug that into the bike. And what I discovered is, on the back, this is quite cool, I didn't realize this, on the back of this thing, there are two um, uh, connectors over there, uh, and they are these two. I've taken the, the shroud thing off, and I've got to cut that. But effectively, those two things are what go into the, the bread, the basket, uh, bread box, lunch box, what is it called? Okay, and the tenant comes with the same. <laughs> so, let me show how this works. So basically the tenant, um, the connectors over there, plug in directly, they're pre-wired. Those two things just plug together. So that's cool. So let me do that. Okay, so there we have it. I'll have to wrap that up and waterproof it. The other side, neatly enough, I literally just plug it in into where they gone there. All right. So um, you've got to get the colours right. There's brown, brown. Literally the other way around, but they plug in pretty much like that. And then everything should work as long as everything else is connected. And that's sort of step one. Mm, and my goal today is really just to achieve that: is to get the blue light coming on on the dash to get some life into this jobby. So. I'm putting in um, this uh, my old Harley Davidson battery. I think it's got enough grunt, you'll see. Um, I didn't try to start the bike with it, I tried with the very big one, which is over there. Um, but I think this one will start it. Still got to figure out where I'm going to put this, but I'll just leave it there for now. That's the idea. I'm going to go and have to play with the wiring and try to figure it all out. Um, but let me just get the thing juiced, see what happens.
put them in the correct way around. So brown is the top, so it says brown, and at the bottom brown blue. Oh, satisfying click. Okay. There we go. Satisfying click. Something flew off. All right, let's see if anything comes on the display when we turn on the bike. Anything at all. And... Woohoo! We have life. Yes, please. So I think the lights are on, which is curious. But that's the first time we've seen it. So, the other thing that I got with the Tenet is I got the RFID version. You get the basic, you get RFID, no, I got the keyless, not RFID, keyless. You get keyless, basic, RFID, Bluetooth, and something else. There's like five or six different options. So my option it comes with this little box, which you basically wire up to your ignition switch, I think, and you get this little thing. And they've got to be really close to each other. They've got to be like touching. So I'm going to have to put this box somewhere where I can, hidden, where I can just go bloop. And that'll basically do the same job as turning the ignition on for a few seconds. So I'm going to try to wire that up as well and see if it works. Okay. What the hell am I supposed to do with this? Uh, okay. This is the, uh, the moment, I guess. I think I might head towards my computer. Okay, I have found the ignition switch there. Not sure I can get focus, can I? All right, so the ignition switch is there um, and it has a red, a, a gray and blue, a green and a gray, which is exactly what I um, have seen. I'll just go to my gallery, you'll see. That's what I've taken a photo of. So you can see I've got a green, a gray, a white and blue, and a red. So I found the right thing. So that's encouraging. So I know where I am um, here. However, let's have a look at what they tell you to do. This is the Kairos keyless wiring diagram. So this is the box that I've got. And annoyingly, it doesn't look the same. Here's my box. And they've got like a terminal coming out with... Um, four wires and I've got like a box with a, a gazillion holes. Don't know if you can see them there. Anyway, oops, the good news is that if you open this little box inside, it looks straightforward. There are actually only four things coming in. And according to the labeling, the first one is ground. Hey, this actually worked quite well. Let me try this again. Okay, so there you go. Uh, there. All right. So the first one is ground. Try and aim. Yep. Then 12 volts. I'm expecting uh, black, red. Not black and red. I'm expecting. Uh, okay. Massive wires. So um, here's the switch again. So um, there are those four colours. So I am going to splice this. I'm not going to use this one anyway, but I'll, so I'm just going to splice it and put the box in line. Um, then the cutoff, the emergency switch, is obviously still wired to this side, and that's it there, right? That must be it. Yep. Um, I will shift it across to there. So I just have to look at the connections to see if they're the same. There's a lot of them here. You see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's nine connectors in there. How many are on here? Hey, also nine. Bingo. No, that's the heated grips. No, that's the left-hand side. Uh, where's the right-hand side? The right-hand side is... And you got four, five. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of mapping when I get to that. We'll just leave that for now. We'll just use this for now because it's fun to play. But let me just check something. I'm just going to turn it on with my key. Okay, so you can see the light comes on. Right. So technically, if I just flick this, it should turn that off. Right. And then I know I've got the right thing. Ah, ah. Yep. Perfect. Okay, so this is the emergency shutoff. It is still working. If I trace 
the wires, if you recall, I'm looking for a yellow and green. Now I've looked on this side, there's only one there, yellow and green, and it goes through to a double yellow and green on the other side. Okay, well let's wire up this side first. So I've got these four jobbies to do. I found some wire, um, which looks to be the right gauge. So if I see the thing correctly, the black is at the bottom. And does it make sense according to the labeling? Ground, yes it does. So, all right. So we just have to line them up, get this thing back in. Okay, I am back with my, check this cool set out. This is for repairing watches and I do repair watches. Well, I'm planning to do mechanical watches. So this is the perfect size for opening up these things. Okay, so here we go. So the unit has got um, two of these for positive and negative, which I'll just um, temporarily put onto the battery. And then I've used spades um, and the other side of a spade, um, which I'll use to um, splice into the ignition line. So, let me go and do that now. No, I'm not going to do that. But I will get rid of this weatherproofing. So I can slip back um, the um, rubber coating, whatever you call these. Make sure there's only one such thing. And there is. And that is it. There. That one. So we cut it. This is the this is the one going to the switch. So anyway, I can put the spades on real quick because that doesn't matter. If I can find them, the spade receptacles. What have I done with them? There. Put them back in my bag of, of terminators. There's one. And or wherever the other side is, that's not the handlebar. <laughs> okay, so theoretically now, I'm good to go. All I need to do is put the green one, is the one that goes to... Okay, now I've got to do the, um, the key switch side, so let me just get this out and take it to the bench. Okay, so what we've got to do is we've got to just peel back the, um, the shroud and splice the green, is it the green and yellow one? Let me just check the document. We slice the, of course there's no color on this. Let me go and check the color. Okay, it's the red one we have to splice. So I'm just gonna pull this back a bit mail okay where's my where's my tool gone it's not how it's going to be for the final pull test next one well hopefully it works it would be a shame if it doesn't that would set me back Okay, pull test, pull test. All right, let's go put this on the back. So first off, this goes back. This is the ignition key. That goes back and it's this one, the red we've spliced. And orange goes to the bike. So that's that one and they fit, male to female, which is encouraging. Okay, I figured it out. <clears throat> it's actually very cool. The keyless actually works from quite a distance. It's like my Harley, it's a dongle. If I'm not near the bike, I can't start the bike with the dongle. So check this out. All right, so um, I'm gonna have to take this off. All right, so off. Here we go. The dongle is in the next room. So I turn on the bike. 
Okay? Nothing. Because the dongle is not nearby. So I'm going to leave it in the on position because I want you to see when it pops on. So I am going to... Okay. I'm going to go for a little walk to go and fetch the dongle and you tell me when the light comes on. That boy. Okay. <laughs> I wonder how far away I was. I'll have to watch the video. Success! We now have a immobilizer effectively. I have an immobilizer. Okay, quick one. Um, the stuff arrived. Ta da! So it's from a guy called Overture on, um, on YouTube. Uh, he lives in Australia and this is the stuff that he's printed for me. So I'm dying to unbox it and see it. So I'm going to do that quickly now. Thank you. Right. Okay, so... What? Chocolates. Chocolates is on the description of this. <laughs> okay. Chocolate scissors. Oh, you're kidding me, yeah? <laughs> he actually has thrown in some chocolates, some twirls, and a caramel. Thanks, man. I'll eat those while I'm unboxing. Okay, this is cool. Hey, this is the coils cover. I was not expecting that. That's a lot better than my plastic one. And I can possibly put holes there for the keys and stuff. Neat. Of course, I've got to open the big one, which I think is the, um, the injector rail cover. Yes. Oh, that's very nice. That's very nice. And last but not least is the stuff that's been printed. Have a look. I feel like a child on Christmas. Ooh. Ooh. Not what I was expecting. Not what I was expecting. That's cool. Oh, that's much nicer than the blue ones. I've got blue ones. These are for the fuel tank, I think. Ah. Neat. And Presumably, those are straps to hold down the cables. Man, this is cool. Okay, um, I have a... Okay. Da -da -da -da. I was expecting them to be much bigger. This is uh, quite small. That's cool. Alright, so what do we have here? This is... Okay, so... So that, that'll be where I can clamp my, my new hose, which is coming down. And then these are the covers to close up the holes. That'll be the one. I'll have to um, epoxy glue that down. And then this is the one that goes out uh, the back, I'm assuming. Um, and these two are the little holes. I wonder what I do with the, with the oval. Christmas time. Thank you, Chris. Really appreciate it. Oh, what's this? What is this for? I have no idea. I kind of assume it's to allow cables to come in. I don't know, Chris, what's this? What is it? It's nice, but I don't know what it is. I'll have to go and play and figure it out. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so time to dismantle this. I've taken the, um, the filter out. And I'm now just taking out this uh, air meter. I presume it's an air meter. I'll just have to find out the technical term out of the inside. And um, so I can relocate this mess and start to measure wires. I got it out, but what I've realized is that this thing that I was trying to open was not actually a, a bolt holding it in. It's an adjustment of sorts. Presumably something to do with calibration of the airflow or something. I don't know. So um, 
and the and the um, the book goes to great lengths to tell you to be very careful about adjusting this because it's the carbon dioxide ratios or something. So here I have just gone and willy nilly turned the damn thing all the way in and out. So I may be needing to take this to BMW um, when the bike is completed to get that adjustment done because I don't have a machine that can measure the carbon dioxide. So that was a bit doff, right? But um, hey man, I thought it was something to get it out of the box. You live and learn, but it's out, which means I can relocate it um, and it'll be very easy to adjust once it's been re relocated. And now I can start looking at this box to see what electrics I can relocate into it. So not all, not all is lost. Okay, this came off. And here's the new printed part going on. Perfect fit. Couldn't be better. How cool is that? All right. So, which way would it go? It can't go that way because it'll interfere there. So it goes this way like so and you really don't need too much of a step down i'm going to be trimming these okay that's fine i'm busy thinking about whether i'm going to relocate all of this stuff into this box or whether i'm just going to move the box here okay one thing i can do so long though is at least to cover up the big hole i don't need that hole for any wiring so whether i use this or i don't Nothing stopped me from putting a bit of epoxy on. Whew, epoxy always smells pretty gross. Okay, I'll let that dry and see how it feels. This one I won't put in because if I do use this box, I need all the cables to come out there. Possibly here as well on the other side. Yeah. This is me, new and old, trying to figure out switches. Okay, so my reducer hose came. And I need to cut it down. You'll see I'm going to cut it narrower so that it fits between the um, the plenum and the air filter in intake. So I'm just here to cut, cut it up. Hopefully I don't bugger it up. Hopefully I've got the measurements right. Roughly six centimeters. So uh, not my best work, it's a bit messy, but, uh, and I had to grind it down a little bit, but uh, it should be a fine. Let's, uh, let's go put it on. Okay, let's hope I haven't made it too short. Okay. Oh, no, it's quite hard to get on. I haven't cut it too short. Okay, so I got a, a new clamp, which is big enough, so now that will work. So that's good. However, I am just wondering about which way to put this. So if I put it this way, then I can still fit in the box because it just rubs straight up against the box. Let me just double check that theory. I'll get the box. I'll just push it in. Okay. So that's where it is. Pretty close over there. I'll still have to put the, um, the bracket at the bottom, but I should be able to fit this in. So I put that there. So I think I don't have much choice. I've just seen other people put it the other way around and I'm not sure why. It's funny that this thing turns around. Okay, so I've got to find a place to put this. I'm thinking of putting it here, like I mentioned. I'm just going to see if I can get it to fit. I've got to make brackets and things to hold it, but for now, I might just be able to get it to hold itself. Just need to figure out the wiring will fit. Let's just put the wire. This could be quite. So back to the electrical box for a second. Um, <clears throat> I've noticed um, some other people take out these two and push them down so they're no longer attached in their bolt holes. You see there, there's one and there's the other, which means everything can go flat. So everything fits. 
all come out my new cup mark over there and this should then just pop on fingers crossed let's see it all closes up nice and neat so I've got the tenant inside now I'm gonna just pop it back in and start to rewire everything back on the bike Okay, so there we go, everything's labelled. I'm feeling quite pleased with myself. Um, I just need to make sure that I make this go flush. So I'll have a little bit of a fiddle, but at the moment it's looking good. Here's something interesting. I connected everything up, and um, what I've done is there's a grounding point up here at the front, over there. And so I put all of the grounds that obviously are, are the right length to go there. Um, and I checked the voltage between there and there, and there was no voltage drop at all. So I just assumed that um, that was good enough. Um, however, um, when I turned on the key, nothing came on. And what I finally figured out is that it's going through the frame and the engine case, or the transmission case, um, it's still not enough. So when I connected a false, well, just a temporary ground between the same spot and down here, then everything came on when I turned on the bike. So that's interesting. I don't know why that is. I, I mean, I had no voltage drop, so why it wouldn't work, I don't know. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna lay a proper ground from here up through the frame and to the other side over there, just so I've got 100% certainty that my grounds are good. Actually go through there. run down solenoid cable and then to there and so i can cut it short there all right so let's do this sits down and immediately doesn't have a pair of scissors <laughs> Okay, so for the primary ground, I've used a much bigger wire. I'm using an eight gauge wire. I've seen guys use four gauge and six gauge. I think that's ridiculous. I just don't know why you need so much. This is bigger than what I had before. Um, so it must be good enough. So anyway, I've got larger terminals, um, thicker gauge, and hopefully that'll work well. I'm going to try and use a thing called a a Deutsch connector. <clears throat> they look quite robust and waterproof. I'm going to try these just on the run, stop, start and um, kill switch and um, see how they go. If they're easy and they're better than sort of these plastic things, like so, which are not waterproof, then I might shift onto these. But uh, let's see if I can do them first. They look like they need a special tool, but I think I'm just going to try the normal tool. Okay, one side done. Pretty happy with that. I don't know if you can see in there. It's quite cool. Now, the yellow one has no purpose, from what I can tell, from my ignition switch. I, I did all the tests, and the yellow one comes on, or is on, when everything is off, but there's nothing on the K-Bike that has that, so I don't need that. So um, I'm just gonna leave it out like that. I'll figure out how to end it, crimp it um, shortly. But let me go and do the other side, which the other side requires me to pull out a whole bunch of cables from here. It's pretty tight. Okay, I'm quite pleased with them. There it is. There's my new little connector. I've taken out all the wires. I think I might call it quits for the day. Um, it starts, there you go. And you heard it. And then if I do that, off, on. So it all works. Yay, back on schedule. Fuel tank next. <laughs>